Hey guys, welcome back. It's Carter with Bits Be Trippin'. We're gonna get right into this one. Today, we're gonna be talking about the iPolo V1 Mini Classic. This is an ASIC that is low power for about 100 watts. You're getting about 130 mega hash. And in terms of that versus a GPU, you're talking about 3090 level performance for about one third the power cost. So in a bear market, why would you want something like this? Why would you be buying a, a device like this? versus you know maybe a cheaper GPU type of thing. I'm gonna answer that question to you guys and we're gonna go through and look at the dashboard, the setup, how confusing is this thing and what are some of the use cases that are not just for GPU mining for a profit or passive income. I'm gonna be answering a question that comes up quite a bit from DAP developers when they're talking about trying to set up a small miner to be able to do some testing on test nets and get coins there. This is a perfect little device for a small office, very quiet and keeps the cost low versus having to build an entire rig. So there are different use cases for units like this where you're not gonna put 50 of them on a shelf and try to do it at scale. You can have a tactical deployment of something like this where you have one unit and you're able to get some coins. Now assembly is exceptionally easy on a device like this. It's essentially your network cable in and twin six pin connectors that come off that supplied power supply and effectively you're booted up as long as you have dhcp you can get into and let's transition to what you look at on a screen once it's been issued an ip address all right we plugged in the device and it uses dhcp to grab an IP from your router. And in this case, grabbed dot 80 off of our router. The default is root and then root, R-O-O-T. So once you do that, you log in. Now this thing has been running for a while in our setup. You can see our current setup here. It's showing 300 mega hash. This is an incorrect reading. I, I've noticed this on this device. It does show sometimes an incorrect reading but then it'll fix itself. It's just one of those things where it ghosts the, the miner that's built in. We can go in the overarching uh, review of the informational overview, and you can see essentially the setup that I have. I have it going to ETC Ethermines address, and then you can see this particular address is where I'm sending it to and that it's been running. I have that essentially for the, the fell over pools. So you could have this set up where you fell over to different pools under the minor config this is where you would go in and change those particular things you can see the way i have this set up so if you are replicating this setup you could just follow this as a guide and then make sure that you put your worker name in there which in this case is the address itself that it's mining to and then you have to put the x and the password to make sure everything works appropriately the network protocol just dhcp that's how it gets its address from your network now you can go in here and mess around with fan control i just leave it left it on auto it's been fine you can see this has been running for 21 days straight so i've had this unit for a while and i wanted to test versus just running straight out and doing a review on it i wanted to see what it looked like over the last 20 days so essentially we got this unit in and started testing and then you can see the running log that it's been going and running and you can see the running status when it obtained its lease and that sort of thing uh, any air log stuff that comes up and then of course you can change your password do a firmware upgrade if it's come out uh, run diagnostics, reboot the system, and log out appropriately. A pretty straightforward setup. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're in here, you're you're essentially just going straight to minor config and you're typing in whatever pool you want to go to. So now let's pivot over and look at the payouts of this unit and to see what the consistency is. And of course, this is going to be vary with everybody in different pools and you know what the network difficulty of a particular coin is. This in this case, ETC. So if we go over to ETC Ethermine in this case, we're going to grab this address. We're going to copy this. We're going to paste that in here. And we're going to see the activity this unit's had and how stable it's been and, you know, what it's current unpaid 0.3. You can see the daily earnings is 0 0.08 in the current setup here per week. It's almost an uh, ETC and monthly it says it's going to average about 2.6 ethereum classic per month now payouts we can see the various payout history here and we can see you know on june 2nd it went up from may 27th to june 2nd june 2nd to june 9th it got 0.7 so our 0.75 every payout so it, it's about the another eight days we'll hit this at the current rate uh you can set your thresholds you know 0 0.25 0 0.1 whatever however you want your pay it payouts but you can see uh, there was uh roughly about 168 hours per between payouts essentially so let's take a closer look at this device and as you can see it's sitting here next to an alienware laptop 
Its footprint is well within what could be within an office or a small setting. And of course, we took some decibel readings from it. We did it pretty close and you're looking just at that mid 50s to low 50 decibel rating. You take a few steps back and you're down below 50. You take a few more steps back. Now we're about 10 to 12 feet away and you're back down to 41 in a quiet office room. Now, of course, we did the power rating here, and we can see using the BBT multimeter here that we're just around 100 watts, and that's from the wall, that's direct, so very low power draw for the 130 mega hash. Now, of course, we're gonna be doing thermals here also, and you can see the actual touch of the device and the exit exhaust temperature being around around 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, on the other side of it, the intake side, you're still looking at the hot spot being right there in the mid 80s. And when compared to like a, a device such as like the laptop here, where the laptop has almost 100 degree, 102 degree Fahrenheit temperature, it's well within also that office setting. You know, the power brick being the hottest part of this unit sitting there at about 100 degrees to the touch. Now, there's several vendors out on the web I know that are carrying iPolo devices. You could also head straight over to iPolo.com. They now have a new website, and you can go out there and look up directly by hitting products, V-Series, ETC Miner, and get right to the classic here where it shows that 893, now you get on your first order, obviously 50 off right from the page there when you first hit it. It'll give you that option, that $50 off. So you're looking at about $840 and some change for the Classic Mini here. And if you click that, you can see essentially the reported numbers that we're seeing. And from an observation, we are getting right there at 100 watts. And it's averaged over a period of time between 136 and 128. So it is within its air margin there. Again, this don't be confused by digital currencies here. Right now, ETC hash is the only... Uh, currency that's working on it right now from our testing and maybe there is a future firmware that would add some other currencies here we do not have a full data spec sheet on this but can request from ipolo if they will uh, provide that to the community on you know how much memory is in the device and can other coins at some other point in time be covered that would be one of my open questions with them but other than that, you, what you see is what you get on this from the ETC per ordering and this price being well under a 3090, which is essentially its direct competition when it comes to a GPU. Now, being a GPU guy, I'm, I like the versatility of GPUs, but I also understand and respect the place where you have a lot more participation that can come in at a lower power cost uh, for folks that just, you know, can't have a GPU's versatility and power usage uh, because it doesn't make sense for them from a power standpoint. But this allows the entry of other folks that may have higher power costs come into this and also participate. So uh, I've always been pro participation. This is a device that allows participation at a lower cost comparable to a GPU. Always know it's tough in a bear market, but having options is critical especially if you're making changes on your existing farm and still want to participate. So like, subscribe, share my dudes, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.